What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and today we're talking about Oblivion Override. I had previously made a review of the early access version of this game roughly six months ago, but it's finally here for the official release. Being a side-scroller 2D roguelike hash and slash game, it definitely interested me. But once you get in, it honestly hooks you. Hubble Mill has made some major updates to the game that it made it feel completely different and changed in a big way. But the question I'm here to answer is, does Oblivion Override match the level of other recent indie games out there? Are the updates worth making the jump into the game itself? Let's get destroyed by some bosses, slash through some robots, and jump right into this. Let's start off with the good. When I think of the gameplay, it is straight up butter. You are getting 26 different weapon variants, ranging from the katanas, the bats, the hammers, axes, mega gloves, hell, you could even ride a damn Christmas tree. Fighting robots has never been so much fun in my entire existence playing these types of games because you can destroy them in many different ways, shapes, and forms, and using all different weapon variants is just unique and fun. It gives you all different ways to play, and I feel like I've always been a fan of it. But I think one of the coolest aspects they added in the gameplay was that they now added all new types of mechs that are completely different than anything I've seen in this game so far. It's giving the player a lot more ways to play, meaning that they can change up whether they want to be kind of more of a beefy type of mech that deals out bigger damage, but you basically have an ability where it's like almost like an energy blast that gets thrown at people. You have faster mechs that have more of a sleeker design with quicker movements, or you can have just a base one that you start off with. But the idea is, is that they have all these different ways to play, and you can kind of find the mech that fits your playstyle. The visuals of this game are kind of the best part of this storytelling component. The outside world is just extremely interesting. The lore in the background is honestly the best aspect of this game when it comes to how well these artists were able to kind of show off what the world is like. Whether it's these dark kind of tunnels that show kind of the decimation and destruction that have happened in the previous aspects of this game, or it's different areas that you progress in multiple different levels that kind of show different story plots that have happened throughout the entire event before the game even took place. Or it's kind of that interesting mystery that's in the background that gets people to wonder what really did happen here. I have to give a shout out to Humble Mill and the way that these artists had made the backgrounds and just the uniqueness of this entire kind of outside world of Oblivion Override. It is completely broken and desolate and as you progress you start to find out more about the story and it just feels great but the best aspect has to be with the bosses the music of these different fights are top notch i've never been so amped to fight a different boss and, and these moments get intense they each have their very unique art styles that make all the bosses kind of different in their own way they obviously have their own move sets but i feel like each one has its own kind of role in this universe whether i'm fighting a giant robot or i'm fighting kind of one in a pit like almost like a ufc fight or I'm fighting a magician that has the ability to throw cards at me like their Gambit from X-Men. The idea is that each one of these mechs kind of have their own territory they're controlling. And on top of that, they just have these really fun ways and, and types of combat scenarios that you're going to be seeing in these different fights. And as you progress, you're starting to see more different bosses out there. And I find it hilarious that you can actually slash against some guy who is like a store clerk or even some random robot and they will end up turning into some beefcake that is going to destroy you if you try to step up to them. Bosses are clearly the best aspect and I'm all for it. Now with the good, we have to talk about the bad. As much as I love the story and the lore of what Oblivion Override is doing, the biggest issue I saw right off the bat was that this story should have been presented way better than it is. The last time I reviewed this game, I love the fact that the background of the story is very unique. Basically, the entire story is revolving around the issue where robots kind of took over the world and they kind of were destroyed most of the humans out there and you being kind of the robot to try to help the humans break out from this control and survive. That is a very unique story and I feel like it's kind of fits in that 80s era mindset. But other than that, the way they tell the story when you get to these different parts of this game itself, they only have these bubble texts. 
and I get it. I've seen 2D platformers that have done bubble text before, but there's no such thing as visual cues or movements of characters or of anything like that, which give kind of this game a little bit more emotion. I mean, if you want to get the perfect version of storytelling and how you do that in a 2D game, look no farther than Ori in the Blind Forest. It is a 2D game very similar to what Oblivion Override does, hack and slash, lots of movements, but the music and the movements of characters when voice lines are said gives it that emotional connection with the player so that it shows that there is some sort of storytelling happening here rather than just being cutscene. Hell, you could have even done a novel-based cutscene. You can have it almost like a storybook where each cutscene has a different scene that is being drawn on using these very impressive artists that you have for this game already. There could have been a plethora of different ways to go about doing this, but it just feels like this was kind of a missed opportunity. And obviously, when you think about these roguelike games, most times they don't really have a solid tutorial to kind of explain to you what the hell you're doing going forward. I played this from my last save as well as start over from scratch and i still sometimes get lost of where the hell i'm supposed to go next whether it's giving you a sense of direction or just telling you what the hell is available for you in your home base i mean i played recently and i was like damn i i actually have all these mechs i have all these different materials that are in my lobby in my home base i didn't even know that these these things were here some of them were available in the beta release and some of them obviously were added in this new update but the fact is they really don't give you much of a sense of direction or a real tutorial to get fans introduced to the game now i'm just a sweaty chat and i was able to jump into the game and start slicing robots up left and right but imagine somebody that's not really played this game before or doesn't really know what to do and now you're throwing them right into the mix no real guidance going forward and lastly when i think of a roguelike game i understand it's supposed to be scary for you to interact with every single enemy out there because you might lose resources and health that can hurt you going forward but this game gave me zero reason to go and explore this map is pretty sizable there's a lot of great things to find and the lore of the entire situation is awesome. The whole component of this visual background and to go investigate is for you to explore these regions. But if you are not given any sort of resources or power-ups or anything along those lines that you get access to that is almost like a reward for you to go explore, then why the hell are you gonna do it? You need health to fight these bosses anyway to progress to the next level. So then the best option would be for you to avoid any sort of confrontation not explore, find the quickest way to the next level, and then just keep fighting these bosses to keep moving forward. That kind of loses a lot of the components in which this game is fun. It just seems like a flaw to me. Now, when I'm jumping into my galactic grade, I gotta start off by saying the combat is amazing. Weapons are unique, and the boss battles get you amped to just keep fighting. The lore of the game is really cool, and the art style is fantastic. I do wish they told the story a little bit better, since they have the capability of doing so, and they could have easily made this more of a fluid experience experience and with a lack of any real reason to explore is sort of a bummer to me but with that being said when i'm giving my galactic grade it hits all the feels of what i want to see in a 2d hack and slash game which is why i'm giving it an 8 out of 10. the long journey of oblivion override has finally resulted in this official release and it proves itself to be very capable to compete with the indie games out there for the price point itself being 17 dollars available on steam it is one hell of a fun time i would highly recommend Recommend you try this game out and let me know which boss is your favorite in the comments below but if you like this content make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel until next time this is marsman signing off peace out guys